local filmmakers were being given the uh, responsibility to tell Canadian stories. And within that germ of thought was the pride of telling Canadian stories. Because the industry was really inundated with American, American, American at that time. And uh, so within that germ of thought and in that pride is that we're going to hire Native people to play Native roles. And that's where my opportunity came from. So I didn't have to go to theater school. Because if I had to go to theater school, if I had the idea, well, I'm going to break into this white man business. <laughs> no way. No way. It took a force much stronger than that to make it happen. And so how old were you when you knew that that's what I want to do? My first job. And my first job, uh, it was just like a duck to water. It just felt so good. I, I could see great possibilities for it. But of course, you know, I thought, oh, we can, uh, we can show a sense of humor. We can tell our history. But it was, it was like a 20-man race in cement boots. Uh, it's so, so hard to, because we weren't, we didn't have the reins. We didn't have the money. We didn't have um, the doorway to the windows. Right. You know, where these things are produced and developed, and we weren't believed. I remember, um, you know, so many times. But when I expressed what is something cultural that might be helpful to a story or make it a little more interesting or more true for me as a performer, uh, I was accused of being a romantic. That it was, there was very much the thinking that we were Neanderthal people, that we didn't have much of a culture, and that I was just making stuff up when I talked in terms about many wives and what that structure was, or, uh, you know, the, the relationship with spirit force, what tobacco is, all those things. I was just basically just called a bullshitter, you know. It was uh, but didn't it... that I only wished to have a culture. Those were the early days. That's the early days, years but didn't ago. they drive you crazy? I mean, there you are. You are. Yes. You know, you are given parts only for. Oh yes, for those kind of people, and they will do. They will sort of be the wallpaper on the story. They won't actually be the story. And the story, the people who write them and produce them, uh, will be white, and they'll have these versions. These. Yeah, they tell their story. They will tell their story. Yes, and, you and, will be the and they will be seen as magnanimous because look at. They're included. See, yeah. they have a native character here, and. Uh, so, did it drive you crazy? Well, yes, it did. And what did you do with the craziness? What I did with my crazy, I, I um, acted it out in all kinds of ways. And, uh, but mainly, I, I just, just kept digging for truth, kept digging for truth, kept digging right. for truth. And uh, kept on my, my senses open to people who had a broader view. To, to people who wanted to, to uh, explore things, who wanted to find truth, who, who admitted that things weren't right. And um, so I really kept my eyes open for new thinking. Um, people who were, were educated in a broad kind of way. Um, Looking for people who, in a sense, were colorblind, though that's really hard because uh, racism and sexism is very, 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 very deep. It's very deep. And uh, very often people don't even know, you know, that they are carrying uh, racism or that they're no, carrying No, I think it's like, it's like grease and dirt in the skin. If it's on the surface, you can see it, but if it's so in the pores, you can have washed your hands you know, 20 times, and it's still in there. And it takes almost a generation or two generations of washing to get the stuff in the pores out. Yeah. But that's changing basic, deep, deep human nature of fear. Bit and by bit, and suspicion. unfortunately, what does it take? Our water disappearing, right. our air getting sick, our planet is sick. Those are the things that finally 
you know, more and more people are beginning to understand, oh my God, yes, we all have a responsibility to take care of this organism that is our life. Last year was the first year that a majority of Americans said they accept that there is climate change and that we have, we have a role in it. It's never been a majority of Americans, so it's been sort of 30 and 40 percent, and the rest said, no, no, it's nonsense. Yeah. And last year was the first time that the majority said, okay, we think it is act. I mean, they should have known 30 or 40 years ago, but... I know. It's a natural knowing that the earth is alive, she breathes, and all the life that is there, not only the physical, but the spiritual, and the responsibilities to that. But what does that mean? What part of her life is uranium? What part of her life is oil? What part of her life is the tar sands? No? And in all of these elements that they're just making sure that they get all of it, you know, and they're fracking and they're just doing everything that they possibly can to get at it. And how ironic that you're from Fort McMurray. Absolutely. You know, I don't think there's any accidents in the world. And, and in order to, the life force that, that, that breathes through me recognizes that. That I was born in Fort McMurray, first one in my family, born in a hospital. And uh, uh, there's just too many things that uh, I can't, I could never just sit back and just go buy stuff and make sure, you know, my life is comfortable. I, I can't, I can't.